with my fingers like this, only the two fingers on my hand, the clutch is a little bit hard sometimes. So we'll just have a look at that while we're sitting on the bike. As you can see, I've only got the two fingers operating the clutch. And if I've got to hold it in like that, at traffic lights for any period of time, well, my wrist actually starts aching a fair bit. So sometimes I put it in neutral. But overall, just changing gears and everything is quite fine because I've actually built, a, built those two fingers up fairly strong. And this one here has got the two steel plates in it too. So I'm like Robot Man. <laughs> is a Robot Man, babe? Iron Man. <laughs> Iron Man. Welcome aboard the freight train, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, she's back there somewhere. I missed my camera. Oh, yeah, no, the camera's been taken off, Kimmy, because she was naughty with it. <laughs> I never have them any longer than one or two days. Yeah. <laughs> there are reasons why we might go into that one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's not because I'm not good with technology. Oh, she's just naughty with her camera. I don't like what she films half the time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're out and about today on a Sunday and it is very windy and very blustery at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. But guess what? It's a bit better than yesterday because we got caught in the rain yesterday. It did snow here. It did snow here in Tassie last night. <laughs> Not where we are, but down to about seven or eight hundred metres it snowed. So, um... Coming from my right there, the wind is at the moment, as you can see with those flags. It um, is coming off the snow, I think, <laughs> in the boat. I can feel it on my fingers. Yes, that's right. Because I did a dumb thing. What would you do? Put my fingerless gloves on. I've got my fingerless gloves on. That's just dumb. Well, take, take two to tango, I guess, don't it, babe? <laughs> they both dumb then, eh? But I'm not whinging like someone else, and someone's got heated grips. Oh, sound like you were. You've done a dumb thing. Ah, uh, that's not winging. That's just <laughs> telling the truth. Ah. Uh, Gonna slow down to 70. That's about all you can do, isn't it? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, and he started already. Uh, just saying. Just saying. You know, guys, he starts from when he opens his fucking mouth. Yeah. First thing of the morning. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck do I wake up next to the day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I say. Oh, fuck, I'm all over going back to sleep. <laughs> it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now I've got to have a little talk about a couple of things. Well, sort of have a little talk about a couple of things, don't we, both? Do we? Yeah, we do. Okay. There's been, with all our films that we put on YouTube, there's been a lot of comments on there about how did you lose your fingers, Rusty? As in that, right there. I think you might be able to see that. So guess what, guys? We're going to tell you today how Rusty lost his fingers. And there is a very bizarre twist to it. Very bizarre, in there, babe. Sure is. <laughs> so we're going to go out for our little ride now, and then we'll catch you back at home later, and we'll let you know because there's a lot of people commenting, want to know what happened, where are they? Well, they're obviously not on me fucking hand, are they, babe? <laughs> are they on me hand? We know where they ended up. Yeah, yeah, I know where they ended up, but they're not on me hand, are they? So no. No. we'll go through that later when it we get home. Gives him a whole yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Yep. So, oh, we'll go for our little ride, we'll grab a bit of lunch, and we'll catch you back at home later, guys, and um, explain to you what happened. Welcome, guys. As I said, we would come back home and talk about the fingers. I don't know if you can see them there, but I'll just show you what I am missing. I think you might be able to see that there. Those two fingers right there. Now, 
We've just got back from the ride. Like I said, we get, we'll get, we come home and we'll talk about it, how I lost them, because on YouTube and Facebook, for a matter of fact, a lot of people have noticed I haven't got those two fingers and they've, and they've commented and wondering why or how, I should say, he lost the fingers. It's not why. I didn't really want to lose them, did I, babe? <laughs> no, they were perfectly okay. Yeah, they were perfectly okay, weren't yeah. they, sweetie? Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do... And by the way, it was bloody windy out there on that ride. It was. Yeah, yeah, it's about 40 kilometres an hour. But we went and had a bit of lunch, come back. Oh, look, I'm getting off the subject. Get back onto it, Mark Victor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Running around everywhere, off aren't I? Off with the fairies. <laughs> yeah, off with the fairies. Okay, so, like I said, people want to know what happened to the fingers. The thing is, I'm gonna, there is a real bizarre twist to this. Real bizarre twist, isn't there? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you... Uh, three scenarios of how I lost my fingers. One of them is the real one in the boat. One's the real reason, yeah. One is the real reason. Yes. The others, well, it could have been the reason. Well, yeah, it could have. Yes. Yeah. All true things. Mm. All true things about old Rusty here. Mm. But one of them is how I lost my fingers. So, oh, and I want you guys to guess which one it really is. And at the end of this, we'll show you the bizarre twist to this. Okay. So anyway, first, first one. Plausible story. Right. Okay. So I was unemployed for a fair while and I used to go out fishing with a good mate of mine. He used to run a fishing boat for his brother, mm -hmm. um, one of my best mates, and we used to go out grab all fishing all the time, netting, for salmon, trevally and all that sort of stuff. This one morning, we're down Sisters Beach here in Tasmania. I put up a, um, or Sisters Beach, off Sisters Beach boat ramp on the point down there. I'll try and put up the map of Sisters Beach in Tasmania. And we're pulling our nets early in the morning. Now, we come to the last net and there was something wrong. It was either fouled up or we had a lot of fish in it. Sort of was the case, a lot of fish in it. But it was just one fish. Now, what happened was, where, where's my photo, babe? Behind you. Oh, be, oh, there it is, right there. So what happened was, I'll show you this in a sec. We started pulling the nets. They unfouled, which we thought was fouled. And we're only in about 15, 20 feet of water here. Clear as crystal day. We looked down over the side of the boat and holy hell. This is what we've seen. One shark. Now, I'll try and put a picture of this up. That's myself and my mate. I'm not sure if you can see that. Now, this was about 11 foot long and it was fouled up in the nets. We both looked up at each other. <gasps> if we don't get it, no one's going to believe us. Yep. So anyway, that's fine. He was virtually, he was dead anyway. So he wasn't struggling, was he? I don't know. This was before my time. Yeah, it was before your time. I wasn't knew it? you then. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, we started hauling him in, which took us ages. This shark probably weighed 400 kilos or so. We got him up to the bow of the boat and realised there was no, it was only myself and my mate on the boat. There was no way in hell we we're going to lift him over the side of the boat to get him on board. So next thing was... Hold him there while my mate tied a rope around his um, tail and we tow him back in to the boat ramp, which the boat ramp was only probably 200 metres away. Okay, so this is the Sisters Beach boat ramp right here, right there where that is. And the point where we, br where we caught the shark is right here. That's where we caught the shark and... That is where we had to tow it in backwards to. So we thought, yep, that will do. So I'm holding the net here. He's holding the other end. All of a sudden, because of 400 kilos, the, um, I had hold of the boy, boy line. All of a sudden, because of the weight, it just snapped the rope around my fingers. And well... That was it. It pulled all the tendons and all the muscles in my fingers. Um, we did tow the, 
we did end up getting the um, rope around the tail and we had to actually tow it backwards into shore. Uh, we couldn't get in any other way because because the shark was going underneath the boat. So we got it back in the board, in, into the boat ramp and everything and um, broke the boat winch trying to get the shark up onto the boat. But that's fine. I went to the hospital and they couldn't repair the tendons or the nerves in the two fingers there. And it actually broke this finger here. And I've got two steel plates in that one. So the moral is... Watch what you're bloody doing, eh, babe? Watch, Watch where you, where you put your fingers. fingers. Yeah. Yes. So, and this was um, back in the 80s? Oh, this 80s. would have been... It made the newspapers anyway. Yeah, that, that is actually a photo out of the newspaper, a black and white one, <laughs> uh, down at the wharf at Wynyard. Um, that would have been probably 89, 90, somewhere about there. Mm. Yeah, so it's a fair while ago. Yeah. Anyway, I'm having a drink and we'll be back with you in a sec. We'll click to these commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Next scenario, I used to be a firewood cutter. Now, I've done this for a lot of years, a lot of years. Now, my brother-in-law at the time, he had a big wood splitter. It was called a Joby wood splitter. I'll try and put a picture of it up on the screen so you know. But the one I put up on the screen, I can't find a proper picture. It's virtually the same. But this one I'm putting up on the screen runs a PTO winch off, off the back of the track, a PTO off the back of a tractor, whereas the one I was operating had um, big hydraulic tanks and a mot actual motor on it itself. This is a wood splitter like the one I was using, as I said, and the motor of this wood splitter would sit there. This one here is an actual PTO shaft drive one. Now, my brother-in-law had to work this day and he wanted me to go and split this firewood for this bloke up on his property. Um, I was going to get paid for it, obviously. Now, this wood splitter used to split between 10 and 12 metres an hour, and it would take up to a five-foot size ring in it by about 20 or 22 inches wide, I think. So it was a pretty good wood splitter. So I had about 10 minutes to go up the bush. Been splitting all day. I had to get home to get the kids. Uh, I had to leave so I could go and pick the kids up from school. So we're at the bush about 10 minutes ago. The bloke I was splitting the wood for, he was back, he had a set of log grabs. I'll put a picture up on the screen of similar log grabs. I can't find the exact one. Just to show you what it looks like on the back of the tractor. He was lifting up five foot rings of um, wood to put in the cradle of this wood splitter for me to split. Now, each time he, he dropped the ring in there for me so I could split it. But each time he went off, the uh, log grabs would uh, hit my hydraulic tanks on the wood splitter. So each time I was just grabbing hold, just grabbing hold of the log grabs, and because they were free swinging sort of things, and just guiding them away as he as he drove off in the tractor to get the next ring. Well, ten minutes ago, I did exactly the same thing. Put my hands on it, but I put my hands on top of it this time. Now. The thing was with that, the log grabs like that, and across here is a ram. But the ram I'm talking about is this ram right here, tucked away in there. So across here is a ram, the log grabs come down here. This time, I put my hand on here just to throw him away. Okay, so this is where I put my hand, in there. This bit here, that there, was not there on the log grabs I was using, but I'll put my hand right there. As he was driving off, he opened up the log grabs to get the next big ring of firewood. The thing was, when he opened it up, the ram that goes across here that opens them come down on top of my fingers. And I heard crunch. And I yelled out to him, hey, stop, my fingers jammed. You weren't there, were you, babe? No, I wasn't. Oh, I was going out with her at the time, though. He had one thing on his mind. Yeah, a woman. yeah, bloody woman. Anyway, it come down on top of it, crunch, and I yelled out to him. My hands caught um, 
Open. Yeah, no, I didn't say open. I just said, hands caught. And he, he stopped and looked around and he thought he had to open them up more. But opening them up more brought that ram down. Then I heard crunch again. I said, no, the other way. So he opened them up and drove off. And there and then I knew I'd lost a couple of fingers. So I said, you better take me to the hospital. And, to the um, hospital again. To the hospital again. <laughs> and so that's how I lost my fingers. Very severe. Anyway, that's that scenario. We'll go to the next one. Or do we have another ad break? Just have another ad break. Welcome back. So, if you haven't seen Kimmy Russ Adventures on tour, Tasmania, the current series, the ad I just showed you, get on board, hey? Get on board. Well, I think we're up to about part 16 coming up soon. So, yes. anyway, regardless of that, we're talking about how I lost my fingers. Now, this is the third scenario. I am sort of a builder, fitter. Trained at home, really, didn't I? But I've worked in joinery shops and everything and um, built all this and everything, built cupboards and used to build a hell of a lot of furniture and all that. So I had it set up in the shed. Well, you're probably guessing where this is going. <laughs> what do you reckon, mate? <laughs> this is before I met Kim. Um, made her quite a few things. The only payment I got, I won't even go into that, but anyway. <laughs> I helped. Oh, yeah, she helped. She'd bring the carton around. No wonder I lost my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> We're concentrating. Nah. Right, so I had to rip down some pieces of wood one day on the bench saw. I'll just put up any old bench saw, just for people to know what a bench saw is. Um, it's not the proper bench saw. Don't even say it is the proper bench saw because there's no blood on it. I had to rip down some pieces. Um, I think I had to take 10, 15 mil off the edge of these um, boards to make them fit whatever it was I was making. And I'm ripping them through, ripping them through. This is a similar setup to what I had, and I was ripping the boards through here. That stock there was a bit closer to the blade, and it was a small cut. Well, you can guess what happened. One bit, one of the boards bit um, and skewed with on the um, saw, as they do sometimes, bang, straight across there. Um, it did hit this one. There are scars there. It's okay. That one's got a plate in it. Yeah, a couple of steel plates in it. But, um, yeah, it cut into there. That was it. Simple as that. Well, it wasn't simple. It was very painful at the time. Well, they did try and stitch them back on. They did, yeah. Yeah, they did try putting them back together. They weren't cut off all the way um, all the way off. Uh, they'll cut, you know, probably halfway bloody through. But they though. went black. Yeah, they stitched them all back together. Um, and um, they just died. They started going black. They took one off. A few weeks later, they took the other one off. As soon as they took them off, I was pain free, I can tell you. It's a bit sensitive on there, but... I mean, you learn to live without it. It's my own fault. I should have done it differently like I normally do on the bench saw, but it's just what happened. Probably I a mean, woman it, on the it, mind again. Oh, yeah, I hope not. It's a split-second decision, simple as that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'll just show you again. That's the fingers there, right there. And what do you call me, babe? Crab man. Crab man, lobster well, man. Well, lobster man, the kids say. It's not very funny, is it, eh? Do you think that's funny? No, lobster man. Right. So, like we said, that's the three scenarios. So, let us know which scenario you reckon is true in the comments below. If I get enough people asking, I might come back and tell you the proper scenario. Mm. But there is a very, very bizarre twist to this, isn't there, babe? There is. Now, I'm going to have to come out and get the camera because Kim can't get out from there and it involves her. So, I'll just come out and get it. And we'll show them, eh? We'll show you. Remember, left hand, two middle fingers. Okay, Kimmy, show them. Look at this. <laughs> left hand. Look. Well, just wait a minute. Bring your hand over a bit more, can you, babe? Look at that. Middle two fingers, left hand. 
we are what they call a pigeon pair, aren't we, babe? We are. <laughs> so, how's that, eh? A pigeon pair. Me and her. But I always said I had to go one knuckle better. Did. Didn't I? Yes. So, we'll leave you with that. And... Um, We'll catch you another day. I hope this answers a few questions for people. And anyone that does know, don't give it away. No, don't give it away. You can have a guess, but don't give it away. We're not going to acknowledge the ones that really know anyway. Aren't we? No. Oh, OK. No, no one's <laughs> yeah. going to know. No, if someone guesses, we'll tell them. Mm. But we might tell them down the track. Yep. So anyway, that is how Rusty lost his fingers. Yep. And so, watch the next episode to see how Kim lost hers. Oh, maybe, hey? Yeah. We might do another one and tell them how Kim lost her fingers if anybody wants to know how we become a pigeon pair. Yeah.